Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I'm absolutely delighted uh, with this session. I was looking forward uh, through the last two days uh, to do this uh, discussion. You know, it's got my favorite people uh, on the on the screen. I'm going to have great fun. Uh, I did circulate some questions to uh, to this group, uh, and I'm not going to ask any question out of the ones that I circulated uh, because uh, there was just a trick. Uh, to to get you onto this uh, panel, <laughs> the, 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 I, I was looking at the title and it said, "Is is Gen Z ready to take on the world?" I was just thinking to myself, you know, I've got a son and daughter who joined the business. You know, are we guys ready to take Gen Z? <laughs> Gen X ready to take Gen Z? I think more than Gen Z ready to take on the world. I think that is very clear that Gen Z is ready to take on the world. Pavitra, I'm going to start with you uh, straight uh, in there. You know, two, two, two quick questions to you, Pavitra. You know, your dad is like, uh, you know, like the Amitabh Bachchan. You know, he's like, uh, like, uh, like, 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 and then you are like, you know, Sachin Tandurkar's daughter getting into cricket. You know, has, has it been daunting? <laughs> to get into the business, or you've never seen him like that? Uh, uh, um, actually, yeah, well, hi to everyone. Um, yeah, um, total left fielder, Anuj. I was only going by the questions that you sent me. <laughs> Not sure what is even <laughs> No, so I would say uh, for me, joining the business was never really something I intended to do. It wasn't even something that my parents really pushed me or my sister to do, my sister Nirupa. And I think that one is because they thought we should just pick what we want to do. And two, to some extent, maybe because it was, it is a construction firm in a real estate industry, which typically you don't see too many women. Um, they, they maybe thought it wasn't the right one. But I would think that, uh, I mean, I would say that as we sort of made our way through college, worked for other people, um, went to be, so me personally, I worked for somebody else in the uh, US in consulting. I got my uh, MBA from Columbia and that whole part where I was trying to figure out what to do next. Uh, I did an internship with Brigade reporting to my dad. And I think that was sort of the game changer for me. Until then, I just thought, why would I work with family? It seems like it could just end up in some sort of contentious positions. But uh, really, that was the time when I had worked enough for others when I realized that he's a great person to work for. Like, I would actually, purely from a professional standpoint, I would actually stand to gain so much from working with him from my knowledge in terms of, obviously, in terms of opportunities. And I think that was one of the, it was a major turning point for me. Until then, even though I was 26 at that point and I was heading to business school, I actually at that point had no intention to work for the business. <laughs> But after that, when I joined, uh, after I graduated from Columbia, I couldn't immediately come back to India. So I ended up working for a real estate fund in San Francisco. And uh, having that analytical experience uh, really uh, helped me today to where I am today. Um, and I ended up having a, a business in the US for four years where we actually uh, dealt with NRI customers for Brigade. So I think that has been formative in terms of what I have brought to the company and my sort of um, background, I understand what the customers want. Uh, I 100% I uh, was talking to them pretty much every day, and understanding what kind of service levels they expect and what kind of trust issues they have. Um, so I think those few things were instrumental for me to join the business. And of course, there's nothing like actually being here physically in India, part of the uh, business and actually not even so much from a real estate standpoint, but just seeing how to run a business per se. Yes. In, yes. It's extremely challenging. And I think the biggest thing is that uh, it, it gives a whole other sense of purpose. Um, and I think that's the biggest, uh, you know, factor in this whole thing. Um, yeah, so the, I agree the, with I that. Think the sector is just sort of incidental sometimes. <laughs> Shraddha, if I can uh, get uh, bring you in, uh, there, there's this one point uh, you know that Pavitra mentioned. Uh, you know, this is sort of a male-dominated uh, business, and uh, she said is that uh, whilst uh, she was doing her graduation, and even you know through the post-graduation, and both of you studied in the U.S. 
uh, Shraddha, you and Pavitra, who probably are meeting for the first time, but I know both of you have started in the US. Uh, two questions to you. One is, what is the dinner table conversation? Do you talk work? I mean, you've got your brother there, you've got your dad there, you've got your uncles uh, there. Uh, what is that? And second is, uh, do you see that this business will change from being a male dominated business? Sorry, Shraddha, you should be on mute. Hi. Okay, firstly, like, yeah, question one, definitely dinner, breakfast, lunch, every holiday outing, any like random social, we're sitting four of us and we just be like, you know, did you see the new, what's the new project launch? What's the new project in the area and what's happening in and around? So I would say, yeah, I mean, dinner table conversations and that's what's even gotten me really more into the business because since I was a kid, I have been grown up listening to all these conversations and sometimes, you know, we are randomly just sitting the four of us or if we go somewhere out for coffee and my dad would just pop out the question like you didn't deny did you see today's jacket and i'll be like oh no so you know it was you know, today's jacket advertisement any new project that's been launched in the industry or any new technology that's come out here uh, i would say it's a real estate family and uh, secondly to your second question um i yeah oh, can you just repeat it again is, is it sort of a male, male dominated industry uh, I mean, very few uh, women who are so successful, and I am so delighted to have two of uh, you on the panel. No, I'm not gonna not. Uh, I'm not gonna deny the fact that it's a um, it's a male dominated industry. It definitely is because at some places where I've like experienced like environment or licensing or at other places, definitely it's more of a male driven business. But you know, I would say the women like equally now. It's kind of adding a good touch because there are as many women bankers, women brokers, women sales for people, media driven PR, you know, a lot of girls are into the PR teams of the companies, marketing teams and HR. So I would say it's, um, it's a buy and buy because, you know, architecture is also a very woman dominated industry. I mean, it's an equal industry of male and women, but I would say yeah, buying a home, you know, at the end of the day, a, a woman is something that fulfills, nurtures, empathizes with the customer. And, you know, this is what even gets them to the table. Yeah, you know what? I really have to buy this house because she's convinced. <laughs> so. Nice, nice. It's going to yeah. be getting there. Karan, uh, you know, I've had the privilege of working with you, uh, with, with not you as much as with your dad. Uh, I am on the board with him uh, on... Uh, on the Embassy Reed board. Um, and, you know, I knew your dad only as a very flamboyant, successful businessman, uh, Mr. Jitu Virmani. And, you know, through the board, I discovered, I mean, he is very astute, far quicker than the independent board directors in terms of calculations, and is able to see seven steps ahead. Uh, but the exterior that you see of your dad is about flamboyance. And then I've seen you and your brother, and there's zero flamboyance, zero flamboyance in the two of you. If anything, it should have been the other way around, uh, that the next generation has inherited so much wealth, and the flamboyance should have come in the two of you. So what did that do right uh, to not get your uh, get you two into the flamboyant lifestyle? <laughs> I think you have to actually ask my mom that question. It's not so much my dad, but it's more, more my mom that, uh, that has obviously brought that. But to be honest, you know, I think both, uh, both of our parents, or at least me, um, I got to see the, the entire rise and the growth of the company. And it was, not, it was never like something that we were sort of like completely born into. Um, and uh, seeing, I think, you know, my dad uh, work uh, and be home late and all of that stuff actually has its own impression on, on both me, me and Aditya. Um, and also, I, I mean, if you know him well enough, you know that, you know, there's no free lunch. You have to work for everything. <laughs> um, and so that's like just been in the way that we've actually grown up um, is, is to always like, you know, just respect um, uh, the work and like everything that comes with it and actually have to, you know, put in the work to actually enjoy the lifestyle that we have. And I think that that's something that we all three uh, are very particular about. So 
Um, yeah, so, yeah. And, 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 and currently, you know, as millennials, uh, you know, usually millennials lack patience. Um, and, you know, real estate is a business of patience. Uh, yeah. and, you know, I, I, I've seen all the three gentlemen who are here, Mr. Jay Shankar, Deepak Garodia, and uh, Jitu, very patient. When it comes to negotiation, oh my God, they have patience like anything. Yeah. And you know, as millennials, uh, you know, the millennials have very little patience. So how does this dynamic work between the Gen X and the Gen Z? Um, it's a very good question. I think that it's, I guess, like a, a story of maturity. If you see that I'm in, I'm in a business or chose to be in a business that is not so much on the patience, but more on the speed. And uh, there's been a lesson learning in that <laughs> as well. Um, but I think that, you know, it's a good balance. And then sometimes I actually would say it's the opposite where you know, me and Aditya are kind of saying, like, let's calm down a little bit. And <laughs> that, uh, that is, uh, you know, on the front foot all of the time. Uh, and so that's that's a constant discussion that we keep having. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jitu, if I can quickly ask you, what are the learnings that you had from Karan and Aditya? I think, uh, you know, firstly, I know that the new generation is far more intelligent than all the, the old generation. You know, uh, I think they're far more mature than the old generation. Uh, I think uh, they have the ability to uh, uh, think uh, in a very organized manner. And uh, they're not so much about the size, but I think they're about how they want to do things, you know. Uh, so I think that uh, it's, it's to me, it's been actually, uh, I've learned a lot from my kids. And I'm still learning every day. And, uh, you know, just yesterday we had a brainstorming session in my house from 11 o'clock till seven. You know, the senior guys and I, like Karan just mentioned, yeah. So they're always saying that let's do things in a more organized and a slower pace. You know, and then do it properly. And of course, uh, I know that Jay Shankar and me, when we see a good opportunity, we don't let go. <laughs> so, and uh, they look the other way that they, they think the opportunities will keep coming, which is true, actually. So it's just a style. I think, you know, when you, we, when you build a business uh, struggling and surviving and trying to reach to the top, and then you, you're a generation which you have something on a platform, but you're uh, mature enough to look after it in a nice manner. So there are a lot of kids who could screw things up, you know, and there are uh, kids who could, uh, you know, take the platform to another level in a much better organized manner. So I think that the three of us sitting here are lucky with three good kids, you know, that who are able to uh, be balanced and uh, take our platforms in a much balanced manner and keeping the reputation built uh, far ahead of everything else than money. Because uh, here you find these are contented kids who've never been refused anything, but have never gone overboard for or being greedy, you know. So. And of course, uh, all this upbringing is, you know, part of uh, from the, their mothers. Uh, and I think yeah, it's done well. Uh, it's worked well for me. I, I see it's well worked for my colleagues in the panel also. So I think we should. I mean, I see a lot of investors, uh, billionaires or big, big business people who have their kids, you know, either playing guitar all over Europe or running an orphanage in Rwanda. You know, when we have so many orphanages in India. Yeah. So I think we're just we're just lucky, correct, guys? Yes, yes, yes. 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 That, is, that is true. Okay. I mean, it's, uh, it's it's difficult uh, to say anything nice because uh, you know the Gen Z is on the screen, but I can tell you, Jitu, I, I think you know this screen is blessed uh, with the quality of talent uh, who's coming in to the respective organizations uh, and the ethics, the culture. The biggest thing that I can say is the humility. Uh, that they bring onto the table, you know, given that they are coming in uh, from a lot of uh, wind behind, uh, beneath their wings, uh, because they are getting into very successful organizations. So it is true, Jito, that it is very tough to be able to handle that kind of, uh, you know, success and wealth uh, and still remain very well -headed. So, uh, so I, I absolutely pass on their compliments, what you uh, to the next generation. Uh, Mr. Jashikar, um, you know, you are very conscious of values and, uh, you know, the organization that you've built uh, across uh, has been fundamentally on the values. Uh, how have you been able to pass 
the values to both your daughters. Uh, I would say equally to Nirupa and Pavitra. Uh, is it is it sort of a more formal way of passing it on? Is it informal? How has it been? Uh, thank you, Anuj, and it's uh, truly a pleasure to be a panelist among uh, friends like Jitu and uh, though I don't know Deepak uh, much, it's uh, really good to see his kids. And uh, Karan also, I've just uh, spoken to him uh, once or twice. And, uh, you know, just to add one point uh, about what Jitu was saying about uh, Gen Z and others, see, like uh, we, uh, Jitu and uh, me particularly, uh, Jitu particularly, I would say, used to do business with a lot of instinct, you know, or the way we have grown, the way we have grown is all through instinct. Whereas the gen, next gen Z, is, uh, they do with a lot of data, a lot of analysis, uh, you, you know, and uh, no, not that uh, instinct is not there, but uh, the proportion of uh, instinct is uh, much uh, less than uh, us. Uh, it's a 80-20 instinct versus the data in our case it may be the reverse in their case of course it's also true that when we started business in the mid 80s there was no data available firstly in real estate and thanks to you and uh, some of your colleagues uh, all the data is flowing in that's why whenever uh, if you, you ask me uh, and uh, so some of your colleagues in other companies ask me about uh, real estate uh, what's happening i said i can talk only about uh, uh, you, you know, our company and maybe our city, but uh, you guys know the uh, entire, uh, maybe I would say, the horoscope of most developers uh, across the country. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and on these values, you know, every company has its uh, values, no doubt, and all of us uh, do fo follow the values. But uh, about 10 years back, we felt it is better to ink them, you know, ink what our values are. I mean, uh, if you say trust, every builder say uh, trust is important. If you say quality, every builder say uh, uh, customer is important or quality is important. But uh, in order to inculcate not only to my, my children, daughters, it is to the organization as such. See, the staff in the organization should know what we stand for. You know, and of course, we need to live by it. So about 10 years back, we ink this, uh, uh, you, you know, our core values of the organization. We called it as the QC first, uh, Q standing for quality naturally and C naturally for customer, uh, F for fairness in our dealings, uh, I for innovation in our, uh, our, whatever little innovation we can bring into the sector. We are not a research based uh, organization to say that every other day we have to be innovative, but uh, considering the sector, well, what innovation we can bring and all of us have to be in addition to doing business, we have to be socially responsible. So, F for fairness, I for uh, innovation, R is for responsible socially, and T for trust. So these are the values by which we harp on this in the uh, you know company town halls, company communication, and uh, in uh, you know we do have a daily prayer in the organization first thing in the morning. We talk about uh, values, we, uh, you know, we talk about the uh, unity, we, we sing a national anthem every day in the office, uh, you know, like uh, these are some of the things which we have done. And also going the next step forward, we print our values in the business cards, we uh, print our values in the uh, literates and, and uh, maybe magazines, you know, l l like that it is uh, uh, inculcated and we always talk about it uh, whenever an opportunity comes. So that way, and of course, ultimately the proof of the pudding is in eating and uh, saying is one thing and living by it is another. So we try to live by it as much as uh, possible. That's why I think, uh, you know, yes. lead, by, lead by example is what I say. I, I, I just want to follow up on that. Is What was the moment uh, that you felt that Pavitra and Narupa are ready to take on the baton? Uh, no, as uh, Pavitra rightly said, uh, you know, we never pushed her, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to join the business. Uh, just to go back uh, when she was in high school, she wanted to be an architect, uh, you know, the, or an engineer. She did, uh, uh, had plans of uh, uh, joining IIT. Uh, she was working towards it. And I gave uh, 
a book on uh, economics by Paul Samuel Paul Samuelson in the 10th standard or so, and she got very angry. As I said, I'm least interested in economics, and you're <laughs> giving me economics book. <laughs> So the, then she went to U.S. and uh, you know she did uh, when she went to college she did take economics, uh, though I didn't push her to do that. And, and also even after uh, undergrad and working for uh, a few years in an insurance company, and uh, you know one fine day she called me and said uh, she is joining Columbia and taking real estate in me, a specialization. That was quite surprised me, but also pleased me very much. <laughs> so that's why I knew then I can uh, hope, for that the moment. hope for the next generation. Otherwise, uh, we are, you know, we are a listed company. Uh, no, now you can always uh, uh, you know, exist whenever you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Deepak, I uh, come in to you. Uh, yeah, two questions to you. Uh, one is, did you did you know that Anuj and Shraddha were going to join the business? Do you know right from uh, first day that that they were going to come into the business? Good evening, Anuj, and good evening, uh, Jitu, and everyone. Um, the thing is, that I had a desire that they should, but uh, not very, very confident when they were studying. You know, they were studying, and the ideas in the uh, by going to universities. Uh, everybody has a different ideas and different reason of the life. One is about the art and culture, something about the physics and something about the chemistry, nothing about civil engineering, nothing about the design and architecture. So while they were into university, I was little uh, looking at it that if you are to do other things than this, then I think it was very limited from my side to something real estate is the only thing i understand other things i wouldn't understand but gradually maybe after say, uh, say one or two years the option of a uh, junior they are sophomore year they tend to go into the marketing and then they tend to go into the civil engineering so i was a bit relaxed now the thing seems to be that what i had uh, inspired to be now they are coming to the things which is uh, into the uh, things which definitely if how the things take shape but they would in gradually come to the real estate. And uh, the thing is, finally, both are into real estate. So I'm happy being a family of real estate. <laughs> and things are working well. Uh, things as others discuss. Uh, we enjoy uh, working together as such, being uh, two generations working together. It's a different way. We, of course, need a patience from our side. They also expect that, uh, feel that to work with that, they also need some sort of a patient because they expect some quick thing, which may I take a time to decide and it happens, but still it's a fun job. Yeah. And then how do you divide the work between Anuj and Shraddha? <laughs> I left them, both of them to decide where they want to work together and whether they want to work independently instead of me and guiding them to do that thing. Let them only work out whatever they are comfortable with working together. Something they work separately, something they work together also. Yeah. Super. Anuj, I'm going to come to you and given that we both have the, we are namesake, I'm going to ask you a tough question. Uh, 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 what are two things that you would want to change? Two things that you would want to change. Um, hi, everyone. Hope you can join me. Thanks for having us, Anuj. So, um, uh, I would say there are a uh, um, lot of changes like um, both me and Shraddha are keen to implement in the near future and long term future, certainly. Certain things have already been changed in the last four to five years of work. But um, I would say that firstly, um, something, I mean, it's a fairly challenging question, but I guess um, uh, something I would say very important for us is to become more, more technology driven in every aspect of our business, be it in, be it in sales and marketing, in onboarding customers, in uh, sending automated demand letters, giving, and I would say um, that's about technology, be it for sales and marketing, and for construction and implementing new systems used used in the Middle East and the US, Europe, in India. But all of that certainly will come at a cost to the company. So we always kind of weigh out the cost benefit and then decide whether it makes sense to proceed or no. Um, other than that, I would say one other um, important aspect 
I feel that um we should have in a in our company or we would like to change as soon as possible would be like um including that how do we get talent into real estate? Seeing that um how maybe graduates from a IIT from a IIM Bangalore or from a VJTI local colleges here in Mumbai Maharashtra, how do they um further I would say pushed or um groomed at a at, at a very grassroots and ground level to look into real estate as a long term career for the future. We know a lot of companies are actually doing this. And even um, I had done a short program with IM Bangalore where could I had a small tie up with them. But it would be very crucial to um, get such talent into the industry at a very young age compared to them joining at a very experienced stage. So I very well answered. That's Arun, very well answered. Technology and talent, you played it very safe. Uh, so dinner is going to be enjoyable tonight. <laughs> Jitu, uh, when you retire, or you never retire? You know, Cindy's never retired. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I mean, to to large extent, honestly, um, the boys are a big help, and uh, a lot of uh, stuff is off my uh, back, you know. And uh, I'm pretty much more involved in uh, all the strategy, uh, the development of the company. And of course, still keeping an eye on the financial part. And I, I see that going forward, you know, just to be involved in those, these two areas, you know, as uh, I've always said in other forums also that in our business, finance being the most uh, important and uh, well-balanced thing. And uh, yeah, I think they've, they've taken a, uh, a lot off my plate. And, and the whole thing was that uh, in our company, it's been all about empowering younger people. So uh, I'm sure you interact with a lot of people in our company that are mostly younger people. Uh, and uh, there aren't uh, many Harvard educated from IIM, MBA, you know, but these are all uh, speed sharp people trained well from the grooming period. Uh, they come at a reasonable price. <laughs> they stay long term. <laughs> they stay long term. And, uh, you know, we have a way of sharing profits with the staff. So I think uh, in, a, in the long run, uh, that has helped the company. And because I knew the kids were going to come in the business, 10 years back, I had surrounded them with younger people, uh, you know, and uh, that's helped a lot so that uh, they have people around them working who are like seven, eight years more experience than them or 10 years experience than them, but not people in the 55 and 60s and stuff like that. And I think main is empowering and, uh, you know, trusting them, but of course, keeping a watch, you know, so, you know, they say there's a difference between uh, relegating and delegating, you know, so I think that's nice. a fine line, you know. Huh. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. And, and, and Jitu, how have you been able to really extract yourself from day-to-day -day operations? I mean, you've done it brilliantly. I don't know many people who've been able to so successfully uh, do it. I mean, it's perhaps a little wider question because it's not only about Aditya and Karan, but as well as a personality, you've been able to really, you know, take yourself up to sort of 10, 15,000 feet rather than at 1,000 feet doing everyday work. I think it's uh, my skill set of uh, ability of trusting people and uh, having a good eye on finding good people whom I can trust. So, I mean, I would say that even the uh, boy who actually brings me coffee in the house from, uh, uh, the, you know, from the my CFO or, you know, people, our partners being around, I think that trust has really built a big uh, play in my being like this. And... Uh, also, maybe I'm just been lucky that I've been surrounded by good people. So I haven't been in a situation where somebody's let me down uh, as far as my trust or their, my vision and their ability to do things is concerned. And like I said, you know, the boys are a good platform. I also didn't force them to come into the business. They came on their own. And, uh, you know, I have my youngest one now studying in uh, LA. And, you know, he's, he's also keen to join the family business. We spent a lot of time during this COVID period to uh, run through things like how the family business would run ahead, you know, how decisions would be taken. You know, tomorrow they, they get married, they have kids, their kids would come in the business. So putting a family charter together. And I saw very, uh, ENY was helping us with that. And I saw a very mature way of them answering things to some of the very tricky questions which uh, ENY was asking. Yes. And ideally, you know, I, 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 me answering them also would be, would be a tricky spot. But... I think their consensus was good, you know, like I, so I, I think I'm in good hands as far as the future is concerned. So uh, 
I think I, it's going to be easy for me to just stay a little bit away like that. And as you've seen that, I only involve myself in some major decision making and everything runs on its own, you know. Nice. Pavitra, uh, we saw this uh, big crisis in through, uh, you know, during the pandemic. Um, you know, if you didn't have support of that, how would you have managed it? Would you have been able to manage it through uh, or you would have really felt his absence? Absolutely, we'd have felt his absence. And uh, I think that's something that, you know, that we all realize. And uh, uh, for, for the whole company, my dad is sort of the leader and the one that all of us look up to. And uh, not just from a family perspective, but also as professionals. And uh, I think that's one of the big challenges that we will face. It's not just succession from him to uh, his children and the generation, but it is also how are we professionalizing this business? And to an extent, we have done that. We have CEOs and COOs running all of it. But I think we um, it's, it's still going to be a transition. All of this is going to happen at one time. Um, and, uh, you know, going back to what happened during the pandemic, I think uh, he has a very, you know, uh, he's very definite about how he's going to approach these things. And uh, I think that was different from maybe how I would have looked at it or maybe others would have looked at it. But honestly, like looking back, I don't think we should have reacted in any other way than what he did. Even if it seemed, you know, like a, a very sharp pullback from, uh, you know, our normal course of operations and how we should really, um, you know, prepare and sort of hunker down. A lot of it seemed a lot more severe than I thought. But then again, he's the one who's seen four different real estate cycles. For me, I think uh, as a working professional, I sort of saw it from 2008 onwards or 2002, but that was just when I was looking for a job post-college. <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, it, it's been a huge learning uh, for all of us. Uh, but I think today, yeah, um, uh, Brigade is still Mr. Jay Shankar, and that is completely fine. For some of us, it makes our lives a lot easier. Uh, people know what to expect when they come to the company, and uh, that I think a lot of it is um, something that we would want to retain and keep in terms of our core values and in terms of our approach. So I don't want to trade away any of those things. I, I actually, my team will say a lot of times. I tell them if you're concerned or need to know how to react in a situation, you should think. What would CMD do if you're confused? Nice, and nice. He, he has the right approach. He will keep all stakeholders in mind. And uh, for for employees or different departments, I think that's something they need to understand. They need to see from an organization and all stakeholders standpoint rather than you know just their own little world. So it's sort of like a um, you know. Um, I mean, it's just like a, a a way of also just saying what should you do from an organization standpoint. But then again, it, it has a lot more impact if you put it that. And then, Pavitra, it is true uh, that you know uh, the generation that we guys represent. We have seen uh, several of these, and you know we were of an age uh, at where you are today, uh, maybe twenty years ago, maybe fifteen years ago, and you know we did what what you are doing it uh, at this moment in time. But I think what Mr. Jayshankar and the way that you related that he hunkered down, pulled back, all of us, you know, did that as a knee jerk because we didn't know whether this was going to be long term or not because we had seen previously long term impacts. I think he also opened it up very quickly once he knew by August that uh, you know this is not going to be that long term. Uh, but you know that's a very good point that you say is that uh, most of us who were experienced really held the horses back. Uh, you know, at the end of March, to say, guys, let's just wait and see what's going on uh, in this world. And those who did not, uh, you know, didn't, you know, they went down, and you could see is that the level of maturity was very different within the organizations who just continued with that. They had not seen those recessions, and that's why you know some of them found themselves in some trouble. But good point, good point. Karan, now uh, you're into technology, and you know, uh, the way you represent WeWorks, and hopefully. The way you're now going to take over the India Bulls, uh, uh, your real estate arm um, in uh, in Bombay. Do you think uh, what Anuj brought out the point on technology? We're going to see you know this generation being able to push technology into real estate. And you know, reason that Karan and I ask is is that you know e even even when I was running JLL, um, you know, it used to be a very common belief that this sector does not adopt technology. 
and I've seen that in Anarok as well. It is very difficult uh, to get this sector to adopt uh, technology. I think we're amongst the last sectors left uh, who's averse to adopting quick uh, technology. What's, what's your thought going forward, given that you're now going to be running, you know, embassy residential along with the Indian, uh, sorry, India Bulls real estate? Yeah, look, uh... I think there's, you know, there's two parts to it. I think, you know, whenever everyone thinks of technology, uh, we think that we need to build these fancy products or, you know, users need to start suddenly getting on an, on an app or something like that. And, you know, that's suddenly going to change, uh, you know, that's going to become technology. I think technology and using technology and data needs to become core part of how the business actually operates uh, to start with. And I think that's something that we're actually, you know, focused focused on right now, at least, um, you know, initially is to first just, you know, digitize the internal uh, system within embassy uh, to start actually leveraging technology, whether that's, you know, the way we use some applications like Salesforce or SAP and actually do reviews on that and actually use all of that to, um, you know, to, to measure a success also to like, uh, collect data from different points of the business. Our business is so vast across so many different verticals. It requires like an infrastructure, the back end to just be able to, you know, grab the right data and people to be able to fill the right data to start off with. Um, and I think once you're able to do that and you just change the DNA of the internal organization a little bit to leverage that, that's when you, you know, after that is when you actually have to start using technology for your users because unless you're able to do that, the user experience is never going to be seamless, um, you know, for the, for the end user. And um, at WeWork, actually, we had the advantage of, you know, some of that already being built out yes. or the actual business you know, being enabled by technology from the start, um, which has allowed us to, you know, innovate and actually put out new products. Like we just launched a product called We Work On Demand, which allows you to, you know, get on an app and actually book a workspace for 500 rupees, at, you know, like a Zomato, like Zomato or Swiggy. Um, and, it, and it's just giving, you know, workspace on, on demand uh, whenever remote workers or whatever it is needed. And that's, that's, because we were a little bit, you know, newer and, nim and more nimble, we were able to do it a bit quicker. You have, you know, an organization that's been around for 30 years and you have people who have been doing something for, you know, that long. You need to, like, actually focus on transforming that, um, which is not an easy task uh, and it is very difficult. Um, but as the users actually, you know, become people of our generation, as, a, as your buyers become more millennials, as, you know, the occupiers within the office spaces are, are more Gen Z and millennials who are already used to using technology, you know, and you're basically a cyborg now with your phone. Uh, you do everything like your mind is thinking through your phone. You're already like part machine. Um, it will eventually like progress to that because then the way that you're living requires technology, the way that you're working requires technology. Um, and it will be a gradual change, but it is a big, it's a big momentum shift that you have to create um, with the biggest players in the world, um, right? And, and actually adopting it. The, the more interesting part actually is that the ecosystem of newer startups uh, and also people from outside the real estate industry who are looking at real estate from the outside view and saying that, look, I can probably solve this problem because I have a certain amount of knowledge and technology and expertise. You're seeing a lot of startups now actually focusing on prop tech and actually solving, you know, these problems. And we don't need to necessarily like invent something. There are many people who are inventing it for us. We kind of just have to pick the right ones um, and, you know, nurture those and actually grow it. That is right for our business. That's what we are focused on uh, right now. Um, and I don't know how long it's going to take. It might, I know, like we hired a CTO maybe three years ago. And I don't know, really, you know, I haven't really seen much of that happen yet, but hopefully in the next uh, next few years, you know, there will yeah, be a big I, I think the trouble is that the CTOs that we guys hire are in their 50s. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, where the, uh, that's, that's where the trouble comes in. Uh, Karan, but you, Karan, you, you mentioned a super point. Huh? By the way, you know, we guys are very averse to get people from outside the industry to come into real estate. You know, we are fascinated by just recruiting from within the industry itself. And, you know, it is such a challenge to get in the talent because all that you're hiring is hiring from others, but really right. not going out the way that you've explained. And there is beautiful talent outside. Uh, and, you know, we do hope that Gen Z does bring in that talent from outside. Otherwise, you know, it is all about, you know, this guy is applied, you know, is he a good guy or not? Uh, so, you know, you, you just yeah. try and hire from within the industry and we'd love to, you know, have uh, this Gen Z in talent from outside. Shraddha, I'm going to come to you. Uh, you know, I know you organize it well and there are many, many, many people who work with that for decades. And you have a great idea. How do you implement that idea when, you know, these people have worked with dad for such a long time and you have to change their habit to get into a different idea? I know you're big on sustainability as well. Um, and, you know, from most of their perspective, it is going to be, well, it doesn't make money, Shraddha. So we're not going to do this uh, into it. How do you actually implement it? How do you get the organization to agree? Is it that you have to go to dad and then he populates it down? Or you have to work your way through the system without sort of annoying the people and then thinking, oh, it is the boss's daughter. And that's why, you know, we have to do this for her. I mean, it's not an easy job at all. Because, you know, when certain companies built a certain way, you can't just completely come in and bombard them and tell them everything that you guys are doing is wrong and I am the best just because I've had that education abroad and interacted with kids from Columbia and Harvard and like all these professors. And, you know, you can't overrule the management. So at this point of time, it has been. In fact, this has been the most challenging job for Untan me. And I would say that we have succeeded because um, this year, it's been almost five years or six years since I've been working with Dosti. And a lot of the things have practified like during the COVID and we've had a couple launches taken place, which have been very successful because of all these new strategies that we have given, driven. But uh, it has been a very, very like, you know, a mentally exhausting journey. It's been very demanding and um, yeah, I would not say it's been a lot of nitty gritty and hard work because, um, you know, the management is all the way towards the end. But, you know, there are so many junior and senior executives and managers that you have to first work with, understand, explain them what software is, how do these softwares operate, how to like you know, put it in word presentations, because Anuj and I have, you know, at this stage, we have we are working towards making the company culture very professional and very digitally and technology driven. So it's, I mean, you know, and we are trying to adapt to all these measures with value engineering strategies because, you know, the company cost is very, very important, especially after the, you know, hey, everything's playing out like GST, demonetization and COVID that, you know, your cash flow has to be your Bible. It has to be in front of you on a daily basis. And I guess that is the only thing my father has um, kind of, you know, just told Anuj and I that whatever you all do, whatever you all think of implementing, whatever you guys want to change, please take a look at your cash flow uh, as if it's, you know, your bread of the day. And then you can figure it out. So it's been dream. I mean, we have, I mean, we still have a very long way to go. But by and by, we do get there. And yeah, that's what I could yeah. say. Anuj, uh, if I can continue with that. Uh, so what, what do you call your dad in office? Um, uh, so we normally <laughs> refer to him by his initial, just by just by DKG. Uh, yeah. <laughs> addressing him as dad. Or maybe if I go to his cabinet for a discussion one-to-one, -one, then it's a different scenario. Uh, but if where was an architect, where was the consultant, then it won't look appropriate to maybe call him that also. But, but uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I was just uh, asking on the side. But Anuj, uh, must be a tough one. I mean, I, I put myself in you know, your shoes or Shraddha's or Karan or Pavitra's. You know, sometimes I think it's probably easier if it was not that you were working for your dad. Because, you know, one thing, uh, and I know your personality and Shraddha's personality well, 
you know, you don't want to be known that you are Deepak Garodia's son or daughter in the organization. You want to have your own identity. So without rubbing off some of the guys whose decision you may not necessarily agree, but you have to follow their, uh, you know, their pattern because you don't want to suddenly start to throw your weight because my second name is Garodia. And that's why you have to listen to it. By the way, I have a lot of lot of youngsters in that category who do that. But fortunately, this screen does not have you know that uh, trait. But what has your experience been on that uh, that particular point? That how do you delicately manage uh, you know between being dad's son and uh, you know a manager of the business? Um, Anu, sorry, I actually lost your voice for a few seconds. Okay, so, sorry. I, I was just saying is that uh, how do you manage the conflict between being dad's son in the office and then being a being a just a professional manager? Um. Uh, so I think to address something like that is it's very essential to to go through the the life cycle and live the life of an employee. But when you have to make a stern decision, you need to take that firm foot and make a stern decision. So, so if a certain employee is asked to wait till late and complete data entry or complete a presentation, you need to kind of give them, you need to act like you're a part of that team. Nice, nice. Longer journey home. You need to also endure and, and be in a similar situation but i would say um it all just comes comes down to balance and maybe you need to identify the future who kind of are loyal to you and know that you are going working towards the right path in right direction although it may not seem like that but once you have like a like a core team established you need to percolate a new idea or a new um, concept into the organization happens a lot more easier for me. Interesting, absolutely. We, we've got just three, four minutes. I, I've got uh, uh, one person needs to uh, Deepak Bhai and then Mr. Jay Shankar. Deepak Bhai, we, you know, our generation made a ton of mistakes. What are two things that you would say is that this generation should not do? From, from a business perspective, and then Mr. Jashankar, I'm going to ask you is two things personally that they should not do or, or that they should do. So Deepak, my business for you, two things, the mistakes that we've made in our generation that we say to the generation, guys, just be careful, do not do these two things. And then Mr. Jashankar, on the personal side, uh, after Deepak Bhai has completed his one is that uh, we as a developer always keep, you know, hota hai, chalta hai, part of a thing that we'll find a solution today. <laughs> but as a second call sometime. And we may be right, we may not be. So the one is that proper, proper study, research, and then take a call and value to the whatever value you've been doing the business. You stick to the ethics and value, and then you will definitely succeed. Of course, hard work is always there. So Along with the hard work and moral and value, you need to work uh, towards getting the things to the right direction and you get a success. Super, absolutely. Mr. Jashinger? Uh, <clears throat> Anuj, it's a difficult question, but uh, still I'll attempt. Uh, you know, uh, one, one is... Uh, I can say for with your smile year to year. I am very attentively listening to this. <laughs> and one of this, I hope, is work less. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so also. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I would uh, pu pu put it this way. Uh, one is, uh, of course, as I mentioned earlier, stick to the core values. Uh, work less, yeah, okay, but work smart. <laughs> you, know, you, you see, there is no free lunch in business. You can't work less. You can't uh, uh, not do this, but still you can't be lucky and, you know. Uh, I heard somewhere, you know, what, what is the definition of luck? Uh, hard work increases the probability of your luck. You know, so that, that, that is what everybody will say, okay, X is lucky, G2 is very lucky. But uh, no, nobody knows uh, how hard G2 works. Most, most don't know. 
you know yes. he is the, i consider him as a financial genius in the real estate sector and no, so well said. He, yeah. success would not be easy he has uh, worked uh, damn hard and uh, the, the, then uh, you know others may think he is lucky because he is also flamboyant you know that uh, hard work and <laughs> flamboyant uh, uh, to, together is a rare, rare combination so that is one and uh, see be, be patient don't, don't uh, jump to uh, you know impulsively don't act be, be, be patient and uh, take care of uh, all the aspects as i said the stakeholders and uh, whatever the a long term think uh, you know approach if i do this what may be the impact of that low is a business is slightly like a game of chess uh, i don't know whether it's uh, which is more complicated i don't know but it is uh, like a game of chess you know particularly when you deal with uh, land owner when you deal with the government authorities and uh, it is a uh, quite uh, tricky so handling a government authorities uh, you know with, with kid gloves is uh, very important and uh, that is something and uh, no, what she should not do yes she need not work as hard as me but uh, let her uh, let them work much smarter than me ah nice nice this is a great summary yeah. not as harder but more smarter yeah than than you give the final one minute where are we going to be 20 years later at least the four of us are not going to be on the screen so you <laughs> yeah. mr jay shankar deepak bhai and myself we are from the screen where do you think this industry is going to be with the four youngsters who are going to be on this uh, on the screen and perhaps sitting in our chairs at that time sorry did you are on you me watching the younger generation is uh, i'm not uh, deepak bhai i'm not being biased but especially from bangalore you know i see the the way business is run i think this business is going to be highly professional run highly professionally uh, it's going to be you know administered more in a balanced way there's going to be a lot of technology and i think it's going to become a much more respected business than it was when i started nice. you know, there were times uh, it was really not a nice thing to say over a developer you know but uh, <laughs> Uh, I think a lot of respectability will come into the business as these younger generations who are more customer friendly and more quality conscious and more ethically much uh, better than the older generation, you know, will come in. I mean, I see this business has a great future. In fact, I keep telling Karan and Aditya that you know this is the golden era. From here, ten years, fifteen years down the line, there is no stopping. You know, like there were these large family-owned businesses in America which became huge corporations, and I don't see it being very difficult for. these kids to build a large corporation with billions of dollars you know uh, just by being at work and just being those things the right things at the right time i mean uh, i think that it is and uh, you know you were talking about making mistakes and everything but you know we can teach them about the mistakes we made but i think uh, my kids will be successful if they make mistakes because the only way you can be successful is if you make mistakes you know and so i would hope that they make some mistakes newer mistakes so they are better and so the company to you know larger heights you know so that's my take on this there and so jay shankar to your jay shankar to your saying you know the harder you work i have a really nice saying for that you know you know success is like pregnancy you know, you know how many times you got screwed you know <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's so true you know because i i don't know where this flamboyance keeps coming from me but i think it just come from because every time i do things differently than other people But um, it's, it's yeah. your sunglasses, Jitu. It's your sunglasses. <laughs> no, you know, I decided to sit outside in the garden and uh, do that. No, I also have an uh, I I had an eye surgery, so I need to yeah. wear them. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I think uh, you know we are in good hands. At least I can speak for the people on the panel and a lot of friends around me also. I see them. You know, the kids are really, you know, humble and down to earth, and we have a good future in the real estate business. You know. I agree with you, Jitu. I, I think India has a great future. Uh, I mean, this generation which has come in—they're they are hugely intelligent. Uh, you know, they are fortunate to have a cosmopolitan uh, education, very international. Uh, they have understanding of the best practices. Uh, equally, I, I hope you know they continue to retain the values uh, that the generation X has uh, you know imparted on to them. and uh, and it is true that it is becoming a more respected uh, profession it's becoming a more respected uh, industry um, and uh, hopefully you know as we said is the next 10 15 years 
um, as this generation gets into more uh, powerful positions within their respective organizations, uh, they enjoy the golden era uh, that is here to, to stay for at least the next one, uh, one and a half decade. So great, uh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry, I've uh, overstepped a little bit on the time, but it has been absolute pleasure. Uh, I'm delighted, I think we could have done this for a couple of hours. Uh, hopefully we will get back uh, again at some at some stage soon. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, of you. Thank, you the time. thank you so much. Thank you, Anand. Thank you, Anand. Thank you, Anand. Just, just Chris, Chris, Anand. everybody with your questions. <laughs> so, bye, bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.